I've been watching and waiting for a while now. Hopefully this happens soon. Well, hopefully this happens. There it is. There it is. That is cool to see. 100,000 subscribers. Man. Uh, that looks great. Yeah, I, I think that kind of suits me, don't you? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> wow, yeah, okay. Uh, that hit me harder than I thought it was going to. Um, it's taken a long time to get here. But we got here. Through the ups and the downs, we got here. And I do mean we. I couldn't have done it without you guys, really. Anyone that subscribed contributed to this. Anyone that viewed my videos contributed to this. Whether you left a comment, whether it be positive or negative, whether it was supportive or criticism, you all helped contribute. Whether you left a like or a dislike, you all helped. The people on the Discord, my Patreon supporters going above and beyond, you all helped, and I can't thank you enough. I really can't. I, I, I could never find the words to properly thank you. A few years ago, this seemed like a pipe dream. But now, here we are. I'm probably never going to hit a million, or 200,000 even, but seeing this means the world to me. It really does. And uh, I better stop here before I start crying. <laughs> so yeah, I just want to thank everyone involved. I want to thank everyone watching this video. You really do have my gratitude. Thank you very much for getting me to where I am right now at 100,000 subscribers. That's still cool to see. But I want to reiterate, this is by no means the end. Not by a long shot. I've been doing this a long, long time. Nearly half my life. I think I started YouTube with CJU01 doing the Gary's Mod videos and really early playthroughs back in 2006. I think it was August 2006, which means I've been doing this about 15 and a half years, right? Something like that. That's a long, long time. Why would I stop now? Let's at least get to 20 years, maybe 25. Let's just keep on trucking and see where we end up. If you're going to keep watching the videos, I'm going to keep on making them. I might not make it to a million subscribers, I might not make it to 200k, but let's just see what happens, alright? Maybe I'll get better at this, maybe I'll be more entertaining, maybe I'll be more informative, maybe I'll lead you to a bunch more great games for you to try out for yourself. We'll just see what happens. Anyway, I did mention that when I get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a Q&A, and it's been a long time since I've done one of these, so... <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'm not doing a Q&A anymore. Um, I'm going to shit can that idea. Uh, maybe I'll continue this video on in another five minutes or so. Oh, no, there we go. There we go. Okay, I'm back at 100k. The Q&A is going to continue as planned. I put a couple of posts on Twitter and on YouTube asking for questions that you might want to ask me, and I got loads and loads of responses, loads and loads of questions sent to me. So I'm going to go through a few of them in this video, all right? So let's start by looking at a question from Mary J. And a lot of people have asked this or similar questions, but let's just take a look at this one. Mary J says, Congrats on 100k subscribers. Thank you very much. I have only one maybe stupid question. Why is your channel called CJU? What does it mean? Well, I've probably just blown some people's minds by pronouncing it CJU instead of CJU or could you or something like that another pronunciation that's how it's meant to be pronounced as i'm saying the letters like it's an acronym because it kind of is it's the initials of my name cju stands for chris james utley and i first started going online under that alias i think when i started my first runescape account yeah i was coming up with uh, an account or a username and someone had taken Chris, so I had to use a little bit of creativity, uh, a tiny little bit, and uh, yeah, I came up with CJU, and it's stuck around ever since. Fabian asks, how can you keep so calm whilst playing horror games? Well, you do something long enough, you just get used to it. I can still get rattled, but it doesn't happen as often. Echo Echo asks, what was the funniest moment in a horror game you can recall? And if you have footage of it, can you show us? Um, well, if I did see a funny moment in a horror game, chances are there is footage of it somewhere in one of the videos. That's a really hard question to answer, um, but my mind is springing back to a game that I played a few months ago called Hatch. Just the sheer absurdity of it, the weirdness of it, was quite hilarious to me. Some of the cutscenes, some of the... Some of the weird things you see in that game did make me giggle quite a bit. It was just so strange. My mind's also drawn to a playthrough that I did a long, long time ago. 
the Dread Halls. It was one of the first games that I played in VR, and I think it may have been the first horror game that I played in VR, and I was not ready for the scares. So up close. And uh, it wasn't funny for me at the time, but judging by the comments that I got under the video, it seems like a lot of you found it very entertaining. I'm just gonna back away slowly because I- <laughs> Candy75 asks, I've always wondered what your profession is and would you like YouTube to be your full-time job? Well, for about a year now, YouTube has been my full-time job and in many ways it's a dream come true. As with any job, there's ups and downs, but uh, yeah, I, I greatly enjoy the time I can dedicate to this and bringing out more videos to entertain you guys. So yeah, I, hopefully this is going to be my full-time job for years and years to come. In the past, I've worked as a surveying assistant, then a surveyor, then a land surveyor. Then I got out of that field because it wasn't for me, and I went over to security. And then I worked as a guard, as a door supervisor, an officer, and uh, for the longest time, just before I quit to do YouTube full time, yeah, for like six or seven years, I was essentially an adult babysitter at uh, university halls, just looking after a bunch of young adults, yeah. Jonas asks, why haven't you ever done a collab video with another Let's Player? Not complaining, but rather just curious. Well, never say never. It might happen. A few opportunities did arise in the past, but for whatever reason they didn't work out. But I'm, I'm not against the idea. Dylan Jones asks, Is it offensive that I watch your videos to sleep or nap to? Not at all. No, I, I really don't mind. That's not the idea. That's not what I had in mind when creating the video. But if my voice makes you nod off, as I've heard many, many times in the comments, then hey, have a good night's sleep. EJ Cullen asks, Where are you from? Somewhere in England? Yeah, originally I came from Fareham, Hampshire, in England. Now I don't live there, I live a little bit further north, up in Scotland, in West Lothian. Drac asks, Are you subscribed or do you follow any horror-related YouTubers? And yeah, I do. I, I don't tend to watch their videos a great deal because we play the same games and usually I like to go into a game as, as blind as possible, so I don't want to get any spoilers, but... Yeah, um, I, I watch John Wolfe's videos, uh, I watch Alpha Beta Gamer, Mr. Craven, Gab Smolders, and there's, there's many others, too many to count, quite honestly. Robert asks me, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Man, um, I do like my food. Can I say pizza? And then we can just change the toppings each time? I'm gonna go with that. Undercover asks, Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle? That's a hard question, actually, because to be honest, I'd probably have Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard. But if it's just the starters, I, I guess I'm gonna go with Squirtle. Although I'm not really sure. Can I choose Pikachu? Aaron Smith asks, what got you into YouTube and why did it interest you? Well, initially, back in 2006, all I wanted to do was I wanted to record a small clip of World of Warcraft to show my friends. I had gotten under Stormwind by kind of glitching the game and I just wanted to kind of show off and my friends seemed to enjoy it and some other people did and so I did another video and another video and I actually learned that I quite enjoyed the process of recording something, editing something and releasing something and then, well, eventually that turned into this. Chantalise asks, what times, day or night, do you play your horror games? Um, well, I know I should be doing it at night more often, but most of the time, these days, it's actually really early in the morning. Usually an hour or two after I've woken up. In fact, it's a great way to wake up to get spooked. Noble Gaming asks, obviously you're from England. What made you move away like I did, and how has it affected you and your job? Well, there was a girl, and... I should make it clear, there still is a girl who's actually working from home just behind the wall behind me. Um, it was either she was going to move in with me down in England, or I was going to have to come up to Scotland and move in with her, and the latter happened, and it's it's been amazing, it's been brilliant. Uh, how did it affect the job? Well, I did have to quit the employment that I had at the time, because the commute from here to there, that would be nearly a thousand miles each and every day. Not gonna happen. Christopher Taylor asks, Can you explain your peculiar obsession with bathrooms and toilets? Um, no, not really. I, I think it all started in a video back in 2012 or 2013, or it may have been like a string of games that I played where I found keys down toilets or useful items down toilets, and it just kind of became a thing and a thing that I leaned into until it became kind of like a channel meme, and I guess it still is. Jido wants to know, the first game I ever played, and have you ever played a game with your parents? Uh, yes, yes, many, back in the day. Uh, not so much anymore, but um, the first game that I played, 
I don't remember the name of it, but I do remember the shitty little knockoff console it was on. It was called a TV Boy, and it was just like an Atari knockoff that you stuck to the back of the TV, and inside the little controller there was like 120 Atari games, so it was probably one of those. I'm not sure exactly which one it was, but one of those. And then after that there was the NES, the SNES, the Mega Drive, and uh, yeah. Here we are. Pippa McConnell asks, Where do you shop for those shirts that match your skin tone so well? The, the pink one? <laughs> the salmon one? Is it? Is that the one you're talking about? The one where everyone thinks that I'm topless when I'm wearing it? Uh, I don't know where that one's from, actually. I think it may have been a Primark. Deep in D, love the name, by the way, asks, How do you manage to still record after a long shift of work? All I can do is rest. Thanks for all the memories along all the years. Congrats for 100k. Thank you very much. Well, thankfully, I no longer have to record after a long shift at work because, well, me recording is my work now. But back in the day, for years and years, I did have to do that. And sometimes it was tough. And in some of the videos, you can see me. I'm sort of coming apart at the seams. I'm, I'm not speaking correctly. I'm sort of overtired. You can see it in my face. I think there's, there's one particular one I think there's a particular video of White Day where I think I was going a little bit loopy by the end of the video because I think I'd been up for nearly 24 hours at that point. So yeah, it was tough, but um, usually I'm a lot more rested and relaxed now. Larry Tolman asks, have you ever quit a game because it was too scary? I don't think so. I might be wrong, but I don't think so. Usually if a game's scary, I want to see it through to the end. There have certainly been moments where I have put a game to the side and just left it for later. Um, a good example, maybe the best example, might be when I was recording Alien Isolation. I knew a few parts in that I was going to get more than my fair share of tension, anxiety, paranoia and fear, and I wasn't always in the right mind space for that, so yeah, maybe I thought, I'll play that tomorrow or I'll play that in a few hours. I've certainly done that, but Quit a game because it was too scary. I don't think so. Too boring? Definitely. Rissol asks, do you edit your own videos or does someone else do it? Uh, no, it's, it's always been me. I've done everything from recording to editing, rendering the video, making the thumbnail, uploading everything. I've always done everything myself. And to be honest, I'd like to keep it that way. Wild asks, what was the first horror game you ever played? And what's your favorite game of all time? Like a comfort game you always go back to. First horror game I ever played? I'm not really sure. It might be Resident Evil 2 for the Nintendo 64. But I don't know if that was the first. It was certainly one of the first. Uh, as far as my favourite game of all time, I think for me it's got to be Terraria. I have spent over a thousand hours in that game and I'll happily spend over a thousand more. Every year, my friends and I like to get together and do a full playthrough from start to finish and it's never disappointed me. I adore that game from head to toe. Colton Smith asks, what or who helped you to decide to become a YouTuber? Good question. Um, I'm not sure. I actually don't know. Uh, I don't know if I had any real direct helpers or inspirations. And back in 2006, well, being a YouTuber wasn't really a thing. Essentially, this was just a site where you could upload footage for your friends and family to see. And that's what I used it for. I just uploaded a couple of game footage videos for my friends, and they enjoyed it. So I did it again, and then some other people joined, and they enjoyed it. So I kept on doing it, and I learned to love the process. And I bumbled along, and eventually I fell into a niche of making Gary's Mod Trap videos for a few years. Um, I, I must have made three, four, five hundred of those Gary's Mod videos. Most of them, unfortunately, were lost because of the hack of CJU01, my initial channel. I think some of them still survive on CJU Gaming. Not many, though. And unfortunately, not all the good ones. But um, yeah, and alongside that, I was, I guess, making Let's Plays before I even knew what Let's Plays were. I just sort of bumbled into that as well. I just wanted to show off a game that many people didn't know about, which was Penumbra Overture and Penumbra Black Plague. Um, <laughs> it sounds so silly, but the best I thought I could do to inject some personality into those videos was to act as the main character in those games. So if he was meant to be scared 
and I was meant to be scared, I would act scared. I would emote the main character. So, for instance, yeah, if he was scared, I'd wiggle my mouse like I was shaking with fear, and that was the best thing I thought I could do. I couldn't conceive the notion that I could actually do some voiceover, do some commentary over the gameplay. I never had that inclination, never had that thought at all, until I suppose I saw... What was the first Let's Play that I saw? It may have been Spoonie playing Phantasmagoria 2, A Puzzle of Flesh, which is a fantastic Let's Play, a brilliant playthrough. I've gone back and watched it many a time. It still holds up. Um, but yeah, I think after looking at that video series, I realized that, yeah, I could inject so much more personality with a microphone and my own voice than I ever could emoting the main character. So I think sooner after I saw that Let's Play series, I, I kind of tried to do the same thing. And I suppose it would have been... It would have been Mirror's Edge, I think. That was the first video series where I did my own commentary, and I don't know if that survived the hack, to be honest. I don't know if those videos are on this channel, but if they are, please don't watch them, because the commentary is god-awful. That's very embarrassing. I think they might be on the channel, but please don't search for them, okay? Um, but yeah, I, I, I kind of just bumbled into this by myself, and maybe I should be proud of that, but, uh, well, here I am. Agrafar asks, what made you only use your camera during intros and outros? Good question. Um, so I think it was in 2015 or 2016 when I introduced webcam footage to my videos. Uh, I never had a webcam before and I, I bought one specially for YouTube because everyone else was doing it, essentially. It seemed like people wanted to watch videos of other people playing games with them in the corner of their screens. They wanted to see the players as they were playing them. And that's what everyone else was doing, so I thought, yeah, okay, I'll do the same. So I got myself a webcam, and I set it up, and I did a few videos where it was me playing the game in the corner of the screen the entire way through. But I didn't like it very much for a few reasons. One, to begin with, I, I didn't really like the way I looked. I thought, oh boy, is this actually how I look on video? I feel a little bit exposed. And I, I didn't like the way it was invasive to the gameplay. It seemed invasive to the immersion as well. I felt like maybe it would have been better if I just kept it to gameplay and commentary like I always had done. And it seemed to be pretty successful and people seemed to like it. People seemed to be immersed. So yeah. So I was torn between doing the two. But I was thinking, you know, I just bought this webcam. I'm not going to leave it in a box. I've got to justify my purchase. So I came up with the compromise of I'm going to be here in webcam form, introducing the game, and then I'll fade out and you'll have the gameplay and it's just going to be my commentary and it's going to be as immersive as it can be, listening to my voice, I suppose. And then I'll come back for my, you know, closing thoughts on the video or, you know, whether it's like a part of a series or the end of the game. And yeah, you know, if there had been any interesting moments, some animated moments where it was either funny or scary or whatever it might be, I'd leave them as highlights at the end. And that's the system that I've stuck to for a long, long time. And it's a system that might change at some point. I'm always asking what people's opinions are. I know there's quite a few people that do want me to just include the webcam in the corner the entire way through the video. Um, but then there's quite a few people that don't as well. In fact, I think a lot of people quite enjoy the way I've got it set up now, where you do get the best of both worlds. So, yeah, that's that's the system that I'm going with right now. And, yeah, I, it might change, it might not, but that's why. Keith Johnson asks, At any point, do you think you'll be finishing up playing the mainline Resident Evil games? RE5 and 6? Yeah, I am saving those for a rainy day, and there might be a rainy day coming up soon. Maybe. We'll see. I'm kind of dreading playing RE6, though. I've never played it before, and I've heard nothing but bad things about most of the campaigns. So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one when I get around to that. Basso Sovietico1987 asks, Will you ever play Myst? Maybe. Slapo Gib asks, Did you ever play a game that really got under your skin and you found yourself thinking about it a long time after? Um, yeah, there's been a couple of games like that, I suppose. Uh, the one that really springs to mind, though, is Scratches. That did get under my skin at the time. And I was thinking about it for a long time afterwards, thinking, this should be made into a film. Caleb asks, do you have an acting or theatre background? The way you read notes and journals with such realism makes me wonder. No, nope, not at all, but I've done it a lot, and practice makes perfect, I guess. Civilized Squid says, 
What do you think about the cosmos? Do you think we're alone out here? What feelings do you get when you look up at the stars at night? What scares you more on a fundamental level? The cosmos or the depths of the ocean? What a choice. Uh, the cosmos or the depths of the ocean? I mean, they're both scary for different reasons, I suppose. Probably the cosmos, though. That probably scares me more. Um, do I think we're alone out here? No. I think the odds of that are, uh, no pun intended, astronomical. Got you. Um, what feelings do you get when you look up at the stars at night? Well, you know, I wonder what's going to happen to us as a species and what's going to happen to me and where we'll be in a few years' time, decades, centuries, and also what's going to happen tomorrow. But I also think, where the fuck are the stars? All this light pollution. Dubas asks, will you ever do a compilation of your can I leave moments? <laughs> um, I don't think I could. I, I think that would take too much time. Ah... Uh... Unless, of course, you're okay with no videos for like two months, I probably couldn't do it. Humanism Agenda 7 asks, What's your favorite movie or childhood movie? Um, my favorite movie currently is probably In Bruges. Ever since I saw it years and years ago, I just can't stop loving the film. I love the performances, I love the premise, the setting, the dark humor to it, and every time I watch it, I notice something new and I just fall in love with the film every time I watch it. As far as favorite childhood film, I don't know. I watched a lot. A lot of the Disney ones I really, really enjoyed. Um, I both loved and hated The Lion King. I absolutely adored the film until Mufasa died. Spoilers, sorry. Yeah, I was crying along with Simba with every rewatch. In fact, I think one time I hid behind the sofa thinking Mufasa wouldn't die if I did that. He still did. He still did. Samson asks, when are you going to do a face reveal? Julie Smith asks, would you ever be interested in re-recording old content? There's a few games from the start of the channel that are silent playthroughs, and your commentary always makes each game better. Thanks, Julie. Um, yeah, I think so. I think I would re-record some of the old content. Um, I, I think at some point, I'm saving it for a rainy day, I suppose, but yeah, at some point I'll probably go through Penumbra Overture, Black Plague, and probably Amnesia. Maybe a couple of others? I'm not sure. Strider Cajun asks, What happened to the hello and welcome to another indie horror game slogan you do? Do you still say it? Uh, hello and welcome to another indie horror game. Dotpot asks, How long do you plan on doing this? And is there any specific criteria you have? Um, well, you know, it's nice to get paid. So, you know, as long as I'm financially stable and I can support myself and my family, uh, yeah, I'll just keep doing this as long as I can. I really enjoy it and I don't want it to end anytime soon. I think that'll about do it. I know I didn't get around to every single question, but leave them down below in the comments. I might answer them down there. All right. Thank you very much for watching to the end of the video. And thank you very much for getting me over 100,000 subscribers. That sounds so cool. Ah, oh, I've been waiting so long. But uh yeah, hope you uh hope you stick around and see a few more videos. See you later.